Hi, and welcome to this live reading from An Alien Storm, Soldiers of Sado, Book 4, by Kala Zay. And this is presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Chapter 1 Vanessa clutched her stomach as she sat inside Sasha's state-of-the-art home. She curled on a couch made of high-tech fabric that changed scenic views at random. Despite the peaceful landscapes, the erratic nerves remained and settled at the center of her gut, radiating out to her entire body. Her stomach tightened, and an uncomfortable sensation she hadn't felt before squirmed through her, and she shuddered from the tingles. "'You okay there?' Sasha asked, offering a cup of herbal tea with a layer of stars sparkling over the liquid. The dream plant was supposed to induce a good night's sleep, with which Vanessa desperately needed. Living in the province of Sado on the planet Celeron had opened Vanessa's eyes to an abundance of plants that enabled her to create the most interesting culinary dishes she could ever imagine. Vanessa took the warm cup, leaning in to inhale the sweet steam. Thank you. I, I don't know what's going on with my stomach lately. Was it a stomach issue or something else? She didn't want to worry her six siblings, so she kept the details to herself for now. Maybe I've been experimenting with too much food at work, and the combination isn't working out well for my stomach? The happy belly has been busy with all the dishes you've created. Abba must be excited for all the business. Inga sat down beside her and crossed her legs. Vanessa used her culinary skills to spice up the menu with some human flair. The Sado villagers responded well, and that delighted Abba, the owner. Her profits had tripled from Vanessa's creations. Vanessa learned that certain ingredients could create chemical imbalances, so maybe that was why her stomach was upset. However, intuition told her differently. She sipped the tea, and the sparkling steam tingled her tongue. For the past three days, she'd been dreaming about her ex-husband, Travis. She didn't know why he'd come back into her thoughts now. Their relationship had ended almost a year ago. But then again, the ghost of an abusive relationship followed her no matter where she went, even on a new planet. He wasn't here, was he? The thought chilled her, and she shivered. Are you sure you're not coming down with something? Inga wrapped an arm around Vanessa. Inga had just moved into Osayek's house last week, and the loving energy radiated from the couple wherever they went. Just over a week ago, Inga and Asayak battled Ulkrin Al Al creatures, including a mother beast that spoke the universal language, which Vanessa also understood from the language translator inside her ear. She could read the universal language after a doctor activated the language codex within her brain via a beam of energy. The human brain was a magical wonder that hadn't been fully discovered yet. What other threats were coming to Sato? This odd churning in her gut warned her to be careful, or was it just discomfort from food aversion? Vanessa was a chef, and food was her specialty, so she should be used to all kinds of foods by now. But she was on a new planet. She convinced herself that was the reason for the stomach issues. Inga leaned in and ran her fingers down a lock of Vanessa's red hair. You're the only one with red hair. Are you sure you're, you're our sister? All her siblings had inherited the brown except her. Somehow, she came out different from the rest of the family. Her mom mentioned Vanessa was blessed with the fire from one of her great-great-grandmothers, who was a priestess from back in the day. She didn't know if it was true or just something the family made up to make her feel better. Vanessa didn't care. She embraced her fire until her damn husband snuffed it out. Her silence earned a tug on her hair. Only a real sister could deal with you, Vanessa elbowed Inga and answered the other question. I don't think I'm coming down with anything. Extra sleep would probably help. Take a few days off from work, Sasha suggested. That fire in you is coming back. Sado is truly helping us become our best selves. There was no need to mention that Travis had invaded her dreams. His name would infuriate them, remind them all of what he had done to her. Her body remembered and wanted to shudder, but she willed herself to be strong and not give him any more power. Her sisters didn't need to worry about her now. She was fine. She just needed to rest. That was all. Vanessa glanced at the time on her smart pendant, which dangling from the gold chain. Where is everybody? For tonight, the seven sisters planned a girl's night out at Sasha's huge house that her lover, Mason, had built. Grandma Ova agreed to stop by for a discussion about Sado lore. Rita won't be able to make it. She's helping with the renovations at the village library. Emma, Is Isabella, and Nina already can't make it either, so it's just Sasha, me, and you. It was a last-minute idea, anyway. Inga made herself a fruit bowl. 
Thanks for hosting us, Sasha. Your massive house is the only one that can host all of us at once, and your backyard has the best view of the stars. Anything for my sisters. Besides, I'm curious to know what Grandma has to share about Sado Lore. She should be here any minute. Sasha checked her smart ring. She only lives up the street. She's probably bringing a pot of her herbal soup for us, Vanessa said. No one in Sado could resist Grandma Ova's soup, which was a blend of herbs and vegetables from her abundant gardens. She prayed a bowl of that soup would settle her stomach. At first, Vanessa thought about canceling to go home and sleep, but curiosity won out. Sado lore intrigued her. Emma, Sasha, and Inga had all inspired a rare flower bud to grow after they met their star mates, their forever mates. Each flower reflected the color of their lover's mist. No one else could see it but them. Would she inspire a flower to grow? Would she ever find her forever mate? Or was she too flawed, too wounded to attract that? She had tossed out her wish to the universe on that fateful New Year's Eve night when she and her sisters were abducted by the horrible Ulcrans and rescued by the soldiers of Sado. I deserve a man who loves me regardless of my wounds. Though Vanessa's idea of happily ever after had disappeared after Travis, a part of her yearned for the impossible. It was normal to want what you couldn't have, right? This opportunity to delve into Sado lore allowed her to believe in magic again. When she was younger, she loved getting tarot card readings, even though she couldn't tell if they were true, but they gave her hope, and hope saved her sanity. The doorbell chimed, and Sasha rushed over and opened the door. Hi, Grandma Ova. The gang's all here for you. Come on in. Here, let me take that. Sasha grabbed the large pot in the elderly woman's hands and placed it on the dining table. Make yourself at home. Grandma Ova's white hair gleamed silver against her light green skin. I'm so happy to see all of you. I've been meaning to go down to the village center and meet everyone, but once my injured legs healed, there was too many administrative things I needed to catch up on. She embraced Inga and Vanessa. From Sasha, Vanessa learned that Grandma Ova was 1,300 solar cycles old, but her vibrant eyes, smooth skin, and healthy white hair portrayed her as someone in their early 60s. She was told that time behaved differently on this planet, even though a solar cycle was similar to one year on Earth. Most of all, it was the energy that made the lifestyle different. She learned that Earth vibrated on a third-dimensional matrix as opposed to planet Celeron, which existed on an eighth-dimensional matrix. The higher vibrations affected how the bodies and cells reacted to aging. Vanessa didn't understand it at all, but she concluded these star beings lived a long life. Would her lifespan be like theirs, too? After everyone had a bowl of soup, they gathered in the living room with a huge skylight. Vanessa's stomach settled a bit. Sasha slid the side door open and a sweet breeze snuck in. What's that lovely scent? Grandma Ova smiled, pointing toward the gr pink grass field. The tips of the grass glittered like gems as they swayed. When the suns go down for the evening, the spade of the grass opens and releases a sweet fragrance. During the day, they collect the rays of the sun and make this sweet substance that they share during the evening. What's all the glitter on it? Vanessa inquired. Grandma Ova's amber eyes warmed. It's a sparkle they show off at night. They're like stars. The sweet fragrance has healing properties. So inhale it. It'll release tension in your muscles. I usually tell people to camp outside for a night near a field of pink grass to heal any muscle ailments. The wonders of this planet continued to awe Vanessa. Nature was truly healing, and the villagers appreciated their land. Grandma Ova sat in a wide armchair with two large pillows. I understand you girls have questions for me. Inga and Sasha were curled up on the wide couch, while Vanessa sat on the shaggy rug with a soft pillow in front of her. We'd love it if you could tell us anything about the significance of these flowers. Inga pressed her smart bracelet, pulling up a virtual screen that showed the three flower buds. The yellow bud from Emma's garden was still closed, but hers had more leaves sprouting around it. Sasha's blue bud and Inga's red bud hadn't opened either. Grandma Ova placed a hand to her heart, which the star beings referred to as Cora. Tears welled in her eyes as she zoomed in on each image. You don't understand how delighted I am to see this. These are blessings beyond my imagination. Grandma Ova's hands trembled, and Sasha retrieved a cup of warm herbal tea and offered it. Grandma Ova took the cup, sipped, and looked at the sisters. 
I knew something was different the day the soldiers brought you here. The energy shifted. I felt it in my bones. I love this land, and there's so much wonder and magic in it. It is sacred, and then what? when this kind of shift happens, that tells me the land is ready for a change. Vanessa stared at her, holding on to her every word like a kid hypnotized by a fairy tale. Grandma Ova continued, As you already know, each star being here possesses their own special mist color that only they and their star mate can see. The mist chooses the mate from energy res resonance. It knows what's best for each individual. Color is important as well. The magic is in the details, so pay attention to the flowers in the mist. They'll give little hints on what they need you to do. The concept fascinated Vanessa, and she turned toward the skylight. Was that a shooting star she just saw? She blinked, and it was gone. It was probably an illusion. Magical things like that didn't happen to her. Each mist color represents a wave in the color spectrum. Grandma opened her arms for emphasis. Each wave holds a certain energy, and each energy field has its own purpose. Some we can see, some we can't. It sounds complicated, Vanessa said. There was a point in time when she used to love dissecting the meanings behind meanings, but after her failed marriage, she stopped looking for the hidden meanings. However, right now, in this moment, something dormant sparked in her again. The desire to believe in magic sprouted in her. Was that the reason for all the nerves? Everything is perspective, my dear. If you learn how to look through the right lenses, everything will have a divine meaning to it. Grandma Ova looked at her with keen interest. We were destined to be in Sado, Sasha said. It's bizarre, but everything seems to point that way. The cosmos is extraordinary and powerful. It has plans for all of us, the planets, the inhabitants, all the worlds and dimensions. It's mind-blowing, and there's a beauty to witnessing what happens and trust that the outcome is for your benefit. She pointed to the images of the flower buds. Love gave birth to these flowers for a reason. They are called blessiums. It's been eons since I've seen them. The last time they grew, they saved a star race from being destroyed. Inga gasped. What? That sounds serious, Sasha muttered. It is, Grandma Ova said. I know about the story because my friend and her family were the recipients of the flower's blessings. There were three buds then as well, and this occurred in another province, so these flowers don't belong to a particular territory. They belong to the cosmos, and they are here for a reason. Something is happening here in Sado, and I, I, I have a feeling more flowers will emerge. Vanessa's heart thudded for no reason. The powerful pounding made the nerves in her stomach appear like a whisper. Do you think Sado's in danger? Grandma Ova pressed her lips into a thin line. I think something is trying to disrupt Sado, and these flowers will help fight it. She looked at all her sisters, and her gaze landed on Vanessa. All of you are part of it. It was it was meant to be. You are meant to be here in this now moment. A hint of fear and uncertainty flashed across Sasha and Inga's faces. The same emotion stirred in Vanessa. Grandma Ova noted it, noticed it. I don't mean to frighten you. I just wanted to tell you the truth. The truth can be scary, but the fear will dissipate once you understand it. Knowing ahead of time only prepares you. Love is the most potent energy in the cosmos. It's a pure energy that transcends time and space. Love made these flowers, and the, that means we have the most powerful energy as our ally. What do you think is happening in Sado? Vanessa asked. Grandma Ova lifted her shoulder. I didn't pick up on anything during my meditations. Sometimes I learn things from the land and sometimes from the sky. Spirit is always guiding us. We, we must pay attention and listen. Right now, what I'm feeling is that we need to watch, wait and watch. Her chin gestured to the night sky. Have you noticed something odd in the sky this past week? The dark clouds, Inga said. They seemed strange because the suns are still shining while these dark clouds are just hanging in the air. I mean, I understand weather is strange and you can have dark clouds on a sunny day, but they look stiff, stagnant, and out of place to me. Inga, with her love of fashion and the arts, would notice small details like that. Yes, you're right. Those clouds have a strange energy to them. I've been watching them, too. They seem to disappear during certain times of the day and then reappear. <coughs> For instance, right now I don't see them, which is why we can see the stars clearly. Keep an eye on them. Maybe they're just normal clouds signifying an impending storm. I started seeing them a week ago, but there hasn't been a storm in Sado yet. Is some, there something we should be doing? Inga asked. 
No, the village weather forecast will alert us if the radars pick up something dangerous. Like I said, these are speculations based on my knowledge of things. I could be wrong. <coughs> Vanessa didn't believe that. I'm sharing this information with you because we have an interest in Sato his stories, Grandma Ova said. And like all stories, there are lessons to be learned. You carry high vibrational energy, all of you. Sato loves it, hence the rare flowers, but something isn't used to this energy. Or doesn't like it. Vanessa had no idea where the fat thought came from. I say we keep tossing these high vibrations in its face. Sasha made a sprinkling gesture. Inga pounded a clenched fist to her palm. That's right. Anyone or anything that wants to destroy love deserves to be crushed like garlic. Right, Vanessa? Smashed, chopped, and completely destroyed. Nothing messes with the Nelson sisters. Vanessa made a chopping motion with her hand. Grandma Ova beamed. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You raise the vibration from your joy and intention. I think you've heard enough about Sado lore for tonight. I have to get going. I need to wake up early and prepare a few things for the two assistants I hired to help me with my gardens. After Grandma Ova left for the evening, Sasha and Mason went to bed. Inga took one of the guest rooms. Vanessa could hear her chatting with her love, Osayak, who was on a business trip with Chief Moser. Vanessa chose the comfortable sectional so she could gaze up at the night sky. She pressed the button on the wall and the skylight opened. A sea of stars mesmerized her. As Vanessa immersed herself in the wonder of it all, the nerves in her stomach resurfaced like a wave of remembrance, making her shudder. What was happening to her body? She prayed for a restful night because she needed the energy to get through work tomorrow. <laughs>